go back to this problem. Okay, so let's do this problem. So do you see that I, I boxed in C and A together, and I wrote an L total, uh, 2LA plus LB, 2VA plus VB, 2AA plus AB, okay? And I'm gonna put that equation in my back pocket. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that equation uh, later on. <laughs> So now I'm going to draw a free body diagram for block A, free body diagram for block B. Now, let's start with A. Let's start with A. When I, when I box these things in together, I'm going to draw the free body diagram for that right there. And I'm going to put these... You see how I'm going to do it right here? Like I've got two tensions pulling that object up, right? And I've got the weight of A, 109.81, pulling that down. All right. Let's call this T1, T1. That's the tension in that rope. Okay. Don't do this. Don't do this. But if you had looked at it down here, if you had looked at it down here, just right at A, I would have the weight of A, and I'd, I'd have that tension. But this tension would be a complete, it's a completely different rope, a completely different tension than the, the other rope, right? So if you did this, then you'd also need to come to look at C, and you'd see that one of these is equal to two of those. So, so box things in like I like to do. And then if you have two ropes pulling that box up, give it two tensions on your free body diagram. Okay, and so now I'm about to sum the forces in the Y, but if we think ahead, all right, if we think ahead, I wanna reuse that equation Right, I've got that equation I'm probably going to use. This equation is positive out. All right, and sometimes you can get away with not worrying about directions and accidentally just guess or sometimes two wrongs make a right. Sometimes, sometimes directions, you can just define your own directions. But to, to make sure it works every time, just make sure all your equations always agree okay so if that acceleration right here was defined as positive out i'm going to define this in the same direction so i'm going to define my sum of the forces in y as positive down so i'm going to put this as 100 times 9.81 minus 2t equals mass times acceleration of block a and now that AA and that AA are defined the same direction, so I won't have any problems if I try to substitute one equation to the other. Okay, so if you're writing multiple equations, and especially if you've already written AA, you know, I'm writing this equation, I'm about to write acceleration of A. If I know that I've already written it, then make sure the way I'm about to define it is the same as the way I have defined it previously. Okay, but that, that's my equation. Uh, it has two unknowns. Even if I added the other equation, I'd have three unknowns with two equations. I'm not gonna sum the forces in X. That doesn't give me any information. So now I'm gonna hop on over to B. Hop on over to B. B only has one tension, and it's the same rope, so it's the same tension. And this one right here is 20 times 9.81. Now, in statics, I would say, hey, that tension is 20 times 9.81, but not anymore, not in dynamics, right? When, when um, blocks, you know, are accelerating, then the acceleration is not, um, there is acceleration, uh, so the tension is not just counteracting the weight. Uh, so I need to sum the forces in Y. Again, I want to make sure I'm about to define AB, Let's make sure it agrees, 
with how I've defined it in the past. So let's define these as positive down. So 20, 9.81 minus T1 does not equal zero. It equals mass times acceleration of B. Okay, that equation has two unknowns. But do you see that this equation combined with this equation combined with this equation? All right, those three equations that I starred right there, those pink stars, is three equations, three unknowns. You can solve, right? I'd probably start with that AA, say, you know, AB is equal to negative 2AA, plug in for AB, but then you got two equations, two unknowns, you know, how you like to solve for those, maybe write T is equal to something and plug back in up there. So I'll, I'll leave that for you. And I would get the acceleration of A, 3.27 meters per second squared. The acceleration of B, negative 6.54 meters per second squared. Does that, and what do those positives and negatives mean? Those, we've defined everything as positive out. So A is actually going down 3.27. B is going up 6.54 meters per second squared. Uh, here's a question. Are these accelerations constant? Well, you have to look where they came from. So once this starts moving, once this starts moving, is this equation still true? Yeah. I mean, those lengths are changing, the velocities are changing, the accelerations are changing, but that equation is true. Is there anything changing about this equation where we got AA from? Might be hard to, to tell, but our free body diagrams are not, there's no angles that are changing. There's no force in a spring that's changing. Uh, these are actually constant. And so we could, if we were asked, you know, we could use, oh, actually it does ask. I don't have this answer for you, but okay. Yeah, these are constant. So it says determine the velocity. We could use a constant acceleration equation um, to find the velocity of block B after two seconds, right? If it started from rest after two seconds, V final, V initial plus AT, correct? V final, it's, it's V initial. So really just acceleration of the 20 kilogram block B. 6.54 and the time. Uh, so whatever that gives us would be the answer to the question.